Hello and welcome to another live coaching. How are you doing? Did you sail this week? Where are you? What is up? I am still in Germany and no, I haven't sailed this week. I think it's been good in other places around Europe, but I've been busy uh, with other things and haven't been on the water. But I am looking forward to getting some action myself and i would love to live vicariously through you so if you've been having some good sessions let me know about it we're gonna get through uh whatever has been posted in the coaching group above uh, but you guys know the drill you can always interrupt and ask whatever questions you want hey hans hans had some sessions axel jorg the crew is all here. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Good to have you here. All right. I'm going to load up the Facebook group while we wait for more people to show up. Hey, Suna. Yeah, the gang is all here. Hey, Rob. Rob had a looping session. Nice. Caro is in Tenerife. Yeah. I'm glad you had good conditions. All right, let's get this loaded up. So if you are looking to improve your tax, this is where you can do that. You can sign up for Fast Tax Secrets. It is a course that I put together to help you improve your tax. And all you have to do is go to my.windsurfingmasterclass.com to reach it. And now let's open up the Facebook group. Hey, Eric is around too. Eric, hello, hello. You got a new 93 liter. Nice. All right. Let's jump in. Okay. So, Andrew hates it when dinosaurs attack on the tack. Pretty funny picture. I love these old pictures where windsurfing, when windsurfing was still, or when it was more popular, and then it, so it shows up in random places. All right, first real post is from Caro. She's in Tenerife. All right, Caro. So she's working on her 360, and she says she's doing a better job with the takeoff, but not making it around. Tips are appreciated. Uh, she's also switched boards. So she's using the Bruce boards. And she posted a cutback and she encourages other people to try new shapes and that she feels like the board fits perfectly. And she says that I told her a thousand times to try some different boards, which I did. Uh, so awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, hey, Max. Max had a good session too. Nice. Nice to hear. All right, let's watch this. Let's watch this cutback. Let's make this big. Nice. Look at that. Radical carving. Nice cutback, Carl. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Let's watch the 360. Hey, Axel. Axel had a fun skate park condition style session. Enhance them on Tuesday and then survival sailing on Wednesday. Um, and then down the line. Whoa. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. I love sailing up there. All right. Let's check out this 360 let's go full screen all right so caro wants to get more around in the rotation another thing caro is that and we've already talked about this but the section that you do the maneuver also matters and doing it into an oncoming whitewater like this is a lot more difficult than going with the section uh, to make it back inside the wave so making it back inside the wave from this kind of section is really, really difficult. Uh, whereas if you're doing it with a section that is, is going with you, where you're traveling with the section, it's a lot easier. So just looking for those other sections is also going to pay dividends for how your 360 rotation goes. Now to get more rotation in sort of the, the goose brew aspect of the rotation, uh, let's let's see what what else we can say 
see here. Uh, the, like I said, the, um, the section that you're doing this on is also really, really important. <clears throat> So the first thing that I see that will be helpful is keeping this, this front arm bent and close to the hips longer. So you do a really good job with this first position. Uh, your grip could be a little bit wider. Having a wide grip in the bottom turn gives you more control in pretty much every move. Uh, and the 360 is no, is no different. Um, and really keeping that, that hand close to the hip. And then the move sort of acts like a, sort of like a clue first back loop. Uh, so you can think of the goose group kind of like a clue first back loop. So we have that sail really close to your hip and low, and then you're launching off the wave and you're traveling through the wind. So rather than then pushing the whole sail up, you're traveling through the wind kind of like a back loop. And then once you start getting through the wind, then you sheet in and, and you do this sort of pop where you're you're pulling in with the back hand and pushing with the front hand. So getting a little bit more through the wind before you do that that pulling in oh, will be really helpful. Kind of thinking of it like that back loop. You're trying to get that height um, through the eye of the wind. So you can see here, like you're taking off um, – this direction, which is fine. Um, but then you want to wait a little bit longer before you start pushing out to get, get through the wind. And like I said in the beginning, with that section being different, where you're going with, with the wave rather than into the wave, um, it will help guide you into the rotation more because you'll have to do a little, little bit more rotation with the bottom turn. And it's also easier to get that lean, um, sort of up straight up and th and through through the wind um so this so the section will make make a difference and then just sort of really thinking of it sort of like a clue first clue first back loop hey christoph um yeah nice some forward training awesome sounds like people are getting some wind nice 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 um, so th yeah, those are those are the main things I would say, Caro. Um, yeah. All right. Next up, we have a post from Hans about fins. He says, "I had a very interesting experience sailing yesterday. Hmm. As some of you might know, I make my own fins, and I tried to find the limits that work both in unconventional setups and strength-wise." Yesterday, I hit the shallow sandbar full speed and ripped out one of my fins. <gasps> oh, no. The interesting part is that I continued sailing for quite a while without the side fin on the bottom turn rail. I was using 16 and a half asymmetrical side fins and only 15 centimeter center fins, so the difference was very noticeable. I lost a lot of upwind performance when going out as expected, and coming in felt pretty normal. But what struck me the most was that I was still able to bottom turn really well. It felt a little bit more slidey, but not uncontrollable. And the top turn went just great, as expected. So my conclusion is that most of the grip in the bottom turn comes from the rail itself, as the 15 centimeter center fin, center fin couldn't have been enough to pull this off. I know the rail is your most important fin, but never thought its effect would be that big. The only thing I really missed without that fin was the ability to generate speed on the wave face. Pumping without the fin, fin felt like jumping on pudding. Hmm. When I finally went to install a spare fin, I immediately felt a huge improvement in my riding. Just that short period of really focused, focusing on engaging the rail had a huge effect on my ability to do a more aggressive bottom turn. Yeah, cool. Long story short, playing with the fins can have a huge effect on your ability and understanding. Um, I've never thought this unbalanced setup would work at all, but it clearly did and was a real eye-opener for me. Yeah, cool. And one of the biggest takeaways from this is just how important it is to experiment. And experiment, like, crazy. Like, I mean, maybe not this crazy in terms of fully taking out a fin, but you can go way smaller or bigger than you think that you would use 
Uh, and that, that experimenting actually makes you a better windsurfer. So like you said, we, you, you went out again with your normal setup and you were sailing better because you learned something, your body learned something having to adjust uh, without to not having that fin in, in the, the part of the session before that. Uh, awesome. And then there's a lot of talk in the comments here about fins and uh, toe-in and angles and asymmetric versus symmetric fins, which is really interesting. So I recommend people go through and read this if, if that's something they're interested in. I find, for me, my favorite setup for riding waves is having a deeper center fin and not so deep side fins. Now, there are so many combinations, there are infinite combinations of how you can make fins with toe-in and symmetry and cant and twist and all of the above. Uh, so maybe there is a setup with, with equal fin uh, depths that I would really like, but I haven't felt that so far. What I like is having a pretty big difference between the center fin and the side fins. I really like a 17 or 18, actually 18, not so much 17 anymore. There are times where I used to ride a 17, but now it's mainly 18 centimeter deep fin in the center and tens on the sides. And that gives me um, enough sort of rail, rail power or whatever you want to call it. Um, and that, uh, and it's, it's the balance that I like is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. Anyway, super interesting. Thank you for making this post and yeah, check it out. If, if you're interested in fins and learning about fins. Okay. Here's a post from me. So I was checking about, out, uh, windsurfing on Reddit. So I joined Reddit and checked out, uh, the, Windsurf, are windsurfing there and I started making a few posts and I'm going to post there more in the future and I noticed that someone asked about vacationing on Fuerteventura and I really only know Renee Egley there so I thought I'd post it in the group and we have a lot of great responses it seems like Renee Egley is a pretty standard one uh, but anyway thank you guys for contributing information and uh, yeah, if you use Reddit and you're interested in checking out our windsurfing, um, yeah, we can check it out together. I, I'm pretty new to this whole scene, but I thought, why not? Why not be involved with the windsurfing community on Reddit? So yeah, I just post as myself. I just use my name. So uh, if you're on Reddit, say hi there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be posting more. I mean, I'm not going to get super into it, but I figured it's a place that a community that I should reach out to. Why not? All right, next up, we've got, uh, so this is a, a clip from a post uh, from Glenn, and th this is interesting. Uh, here we can make this full screen. So Glenn is sailing in. Ferdinando kind of sails up Winnipeg, and Glenn seems kind of annoyed with that. And he does a heli tack. Light wind falls. Uh, Fernando goes for this wave. And then Glenn turns around shortly after. You can see this wave building right on the horizon. So Glenn jibes for it. And this wave looks a lot better than. Oh, come on, we don't want an ad. Oh, motion array. No, thank you. And then he pumps onto this wave and looks like actually the best, best wave of the set. So, oh, there's some surfers in the water. Nice bottom turn off the lip. Cut back. Oh, lots of surfers. coming around yeah I love this is cool to see this this footage so this sparks some discussion about right of way so Fernando going out and on starboard attack has the right of way I think it's really important not to get too obsessed with right of ways when wave sailing I mean right of ways are more for ships boats flat water sailing and for wave sailing 
uh, it's it comes down more to etiquette and wave priority. Uh, so rather than starboard port rules, uh, like you don't want to mess up someone's wave ride or someone trying to catch a wave just because you're on starboard. Um, as well, it's really important to look at intention, what what people are intending to do if they're trying to catch a wave, uh, to be aware of that and and not mess them up. Um, and then also to, to make your intention clear. So if you're on, um, if you're going for a wave and then someone starts to tack on that wave as well, you can give them a little hoot, a little holler, so they know that you're, you're there and you're trying to get on that wave. Uh, yeah, so then, Yeah, anyway, so then there's a little discussion uh, with, with Glenn. So Glenn is the one in the video and and me just about etiquette and priority and whatever. Um, so this is this is kind of interesting. If if you want to learn more about it, you can go through this whole thread. Um, so much of high-level wave sailing involves unspoken communication and etiquette. There's definitely a level of looseness when it comes to the rules. Like if you're catching all the best waves every set, even if you're te if, even if you technically have priority, you should give some of those waves up. Or when you're heading out, you shouldn't mess with the people on the wave, even if you have priority. And here we're talking about starboard port, sort of sailing rule priority. Uh, if you have wave catching priority, I mean, that's also involved in, in what we're talking about. But in this instance, we're talking about starboard port issues. Uh, plenty of the other little situations as well. For example, in my opinion, intention is very important. If I can tell that someone is getting ready to go for a wave, I'll often give them priority, even if I could tack outside and technically have priority myself on that wave. Um, yeah. So anyway, so if you're interested in, in this stuff, check out this discussion. And this video is worth watching. It's cool watching Glenn's uh, POV videos from Hokipa. All right. Let's keep going. So we talked about superglue last Sunday as a remedy for calluses and broken skin on your feet and hands due to windsurfing. John is a dermatologist and he gave his take. So he says, so cyanoacrylate, which is what superglue is, um, are a diverse bunch. So I suggest that you read the attached article or at least look at the tables. Uh, medically purposed and thus more expensive options are probably better if you tend to use them often. They'll sting less due to the lower heat generation during polymerization and lower risk of uh, formaldehyde accumulation and chemical burns. Try to limit the use to windsurf trips or occasions where you have to go sailing. Interesting. And so his preference for windsurfing hands is to saturate your hands in a pair of cotton gloves with lots of hand cream without perfume and then go to sleep and take them off the next day. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Nice, we get some act, got some action in the gorge. Awesome. All right, so Thomas posted, he was building up the confidence to go late on his forwards, not the best ramp and best height. He turned very low, he says, but he managed uh, to go late at the maximum. Um, cool, all right, let's, let's check the sequence. All right, so here's Thomas jumping up. Getting some height, pulling the rotation, boom. Yeah, that's a little stall. Something that you'll find helpful, Thomas, is really getting that mast over, pushed into the wind. And that will allow you, even though you're stalling the rotation and doing the rotation really late, to get a nice whippy flat spin in the forward. Uh, but your rotation looks fine, but it'll it's even better if you get that that sail pushed into the wind before you go. Yeah. So here you, you kind of pick up on that uh, with this example from this other rider. Cool. Well, just like that, I think we are caught up. Amazing. That was a quick one. Uh, <laughs> that was quick. So if you want to improve your tax, 
go to my windsurfing masterclass.com. So that's my dot windsurfing masterclass.com here. I can remove the, um, you can see up, up on the top here. And so you can just go to my windsurfing masterclass.com and go to the bottom and you'll see the course, the tacking course. Um, so this is the website being a little slow um this is the website for the tech course but just go to my.windsurfingmasterclass.com even just windsurfingmasterclass.com will get you there and yeah that's it i think i think we're all caught up uh so i'm going to say have a good windy week remember to post your questions in the facebook group seems like people are getting a lot of wind these days, which is great. So think about what your questions are, what feels like it could be better, what feels like it's not working. Try to get some video, try to get some footage, post it in the Facebook group. I want to see your footage. I want to see your sailing, whether it's photo or a video, or even just a question, uh, get some something and post it in the group uh, if you're getting wind. And even if you have no intention of posting in the group, which I hope you do, Seeing yourself, whether it's a photo or video, video is the best, is the best way to improve because you have your perception of what you're doing and you have what you're actually doing. And we want to get those as close to each other as possible because if you think you're doing something different than what you are doing, it's going to be very difficult to improve because you're not going to know what to change because your perception of what you're doing is not the reality. And so in order to change, the first thing we need to do is have our perception of ourselves matched as close as possible to the reality. And you'll be shocked if you've never seen yourself windsurfing before. It is a humbling experience to see video for the first time. Humbling, humbling, humbling. But the road to getting better is a road of humility. So <laughs> get used to it. But it's fun too. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, once you get into it, once you get into seeing yourself, it becomes kind of addicting, and and then you you can't get enough 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 of it. So in the beginning, it's shocking, uh, but then then you want to really see yourself, and it's the fastest way to improve. Nice. We've got someone in Pozo. Is this Ragnar? Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Have a windy, wonderful week. Make sure you post in the Facebook group. Uh, try to get some photos, video, get even just a friend to film uh, with a phone. And whether it's your tax or some wave rides, we all want to see it. All right, take care, everyone. Have a good week. I will see you next week, Sunday. Ciao, ciao.